Hello my friends, I have another beautiful story for you from this wonderful book. This story is called How Claws Made the First Toy. It's adapted from a chapter of the life and adventures of Santa Claus, written by L. Frank Baum. Claus was left in the forest as a baby and was raised by the fairies and nymphs who found him. When he grew up, Claus left to find other humans. He walked through the valley and crossed the plain beyond to reach the people's houses, which stood alone or in groups of dwellings called villages. In nearly all the houses, whether big or little, there were children. The youngsters soon came to know Claus's merry, laughing face and the kind glance of his bright eyes. The children played games with Claus. Wherever the young man chanced to be, the sound of childish laughter followed. Wherever you may, you must know that in those days, children received little attention from their parents. So it was a marvel that Claus devoted his time to making them happy. After a time, the winter drew near. The flowers lived out their lives, faded and disappeared, and beetles furrowed far into the warm earth. The butterflies deserted the meadows, and the voice of the brook grew hoarse, as if it had caught a cold. One day, snowflakes fell and covered Claus's house in pure white. At night, Jack Frost rapped at the door. Come in, cried Claus. Come out, answered Jack, for you have a fire inside. So Claus came out. He had known Jack Frost in the forest and liked the jolly rogue, though he mistrusted him. Isn't this glorious weather, shouted the sprite. I shall nip scores of noses and ears and toes before daybreak. If you love me, Jack, Spare the children, begged Claus. The young ones are weak and cannot fight you. True. Well, I want, will not pinch a child this night, Jack promised sincerely. Good night, Claus. Good night. The young man went in and closed the door. And Jack Frost ran on to the nearest village. And there's a beautiful picture of Jack Frost and Claus. threw a log on the fire which burned up brightly. Beside the hearth sat Blinky, a big cat. I shall not see the children again soon, said Claus to the cat. The snow will be deep for many days. The cat raised a paw and stroked her nose thoughtfully, but made no reply. So long as the fire burned and Claus sat in his easy chair by the hearth, she did not mind the weather. So passed many days and many long evenings. The cupboard was always full, but Claus became weary with having nothing to do but feed the fire from the big wood pile. One evening he picked up a stick of wood and began to cut it with a sharp knife. He had no thought at first except to occupy his time and he whistled to the cat as he carved away portions of the stick. Puss sat up on her haunches and watched him. Claus glanced at the puss and then at the stick he was whittling until presently the wood began to have a shape, and the shape was like the head of a cat. Claus stopped whistling to laugh and then both he and the cat looked at the wooden image in some surprise. Then he carved out the face and rounded the lower part of the head so that it rested on a neck. The puss hardly knew of what to make of it now and sat up stiffly as if watching with some suspicion what would come next. Claus knew and used his knife carefully forming the body of a cat which he made to sit upon its haunches as the real cat did with her tail wound around her two front legs. 
um, two beautiful pictures there. One, of Claus sitting by the fire with the cat. And there he is in this picture. And he's whittling away on one of the pieces of wood. Finally, Claus gave out a loud and delighted laugh and placed the wooden cat, now completed, upon the hearth opposite the real cat. The puss glared at her image, raised her hair in anger and uttered a defiant meow. The wooden cat paid no attention and Claus, much amused, laughed again. Then Blinky advanced towards the wooden image to eye it closely and smell it. Eyes and nose told her the creature was wood, in spite of its natural appearance. So Puss resumed her seat, but as neatly as she neatly washed her face with her padded paw, she cast more than one admiring glance at her clever master. The cat's master was pleased with his own handiwork, without knowing exactly why. Indeed, he had great cause to congratulate himself that night and all the children throughout the world should have joined him rejoicing for Claus had made his first toy. And there, my friends, is the picture of that first toy. How awesome is that? So now you know how Santa Claus made his very first toy. I hope you